Welcome again guys. This is MJ with MBJ Knowledge. Today we we've decided to pick a very important question in the grade 12 exams that is paper 2 section B. And this topic is cubic function. A very important very simple question and it carries a lot of marks. So if you want to benefit from this video and you want to pass your exams, may you stay up to the end of this video and may you share the content with others also so that they can benefit. Okay, so let us quickly jump in into our question. We picked out a sample question in paper 2 that is 2010, uh, 2020 sorry GCE and this question was carrying 9 marks. And you don't want to mess up with all these marks. Okay, so the question is saying answer the whole part of this question in the answer. Answer the whole part of this question on the sheet of what? You've seen where I'm circling there? On the sheet of graph paper. So all the questions that are aligned there, we're going to put them on a graph paper. Alright, so the variables x and y are connected by the equation. So we've been given a general equation there, or the equation that is connecting the points given in the table you are seeing below there. Okay, so this is the equation here. Alright, now the relationship between these two values, they're saying corresponding values, right? So it means one value here, if I insert on the equation, it will give me the other value either on the bottom or on the on top there so for instance i pick the second column where i've circled there i pick to say let me insert the value for x to be negative 3 on this equation and then if i solve it means i'm solving for y and i'll find to say the value is equal to 0 okay the first question is saying Calculate the value of R. So we use the same exact concept of, I'm just from explaining. For us to find the value for R in this case, we are using a fellow corresponding value. So the value which is corresponding to R is a negative 1. Okay, so we we'll use that general equation to calculate the value for R. Now, this question, you are not going to solve it in the answer booklet, but on the sheet of graph paper. So on the top right hand corner of your graph paper, you are supposed to do these calculations. So you indicate there, Roman numeral 1. Okay, you are solving for that. So we are inserting x should be equal to negative 1 if we want to find the value for r. And r is amongst the y values. Okay, so we are going to insert the 1 here where there is x, here also, and here we we'll insert again the value for r. So we have three slots. Okay, so let us continue there. And as you can see, we've inserted now the values for x here. We have also inserted here and we have squared it. Here we have inserted the value for 1, I mean for x as negative 1, and we have also put the cube there, just like it is on the last term there okay so let us proceed and simplify them negative 5 times negative 1 will give us positive 5 okay the negative 1 expanding since there's a power 2 meaning negative 1 times negative 1 the answer will be a positive 1 then expanding negative 1 3 times will give us a negative 1 Okay, simplifying what we have here, we're going to have r equals to 8. Okay, now since we are done, now we can bring up this table. So you need to redraw this table either behind your graph paper or somewhere on the top left corner. That is also okay. Alright, now we proceed. Now since we have this value now for r is equal to 8, we can go back a bit and read the scale that we are given. So in this case, the scale we are given, they are saying using a 2 centimeter, I using taking 2 centimeter to represent 1 unit on the x-axis. 
and the range is starting from 0 going to the negative side of x we go up to negative 3 then from 0 going to the positive part of x we are going up to positive 3 okay now this is what we do if you check your graph paper that bigger box on that graph paper is representing 2 centimeters so when you make a step of 2 centimeter you put 1 unit you make another step of 2 centimeter 2 you make another step of 2 uh, 2 centimeter that is 3 just like that that is how the values will be moving in the x axis and then in the y axis we are still using a bigger box but the units are different now we are representing it you can see here we are representing 10 units meaning when you make a step of two centimeter in the y-axis okay you'll be going in you'll be making a 10 units step so two centimeter 10 another two centimeter 20 another two centimeter 30 like that then in the y-axis we do not have uh, negative values all we have are positive values there okay so we are going from zero to positive 30 okay so let us see for me i already did this so this is my scale here as you can see we have used so this is a two centimeter box from here to there this is two centimeters so they're saying when you make a two centimeter step that is a one unit another two centimeter step another unit so one plus one that is a two another unit it is going up to negative three there so that is how you handle such i hope it is clear okay so the same thing on the positive we've gone up to positive three here we've gone up to negative three in the y-axis we've gone up to positive three i mean 30 like that okay so let us plot our points now they're saying negative three comma zero negative three in the x-axis comma zero in the y-axis this is where the point is okay then negative two comma nine this is where the point is here then negative one comma remember the value for r is eight so negative one comma eight this is the point here okay then uh, zero comma three so the zero in the x-axis then the three in the y-axis one two Three. this is where the point is then uh, 1 comma 0 1 comma 0 is right here then 2 comma 5 so 2 comma the 5 in the y-axis this is where the point is then 3 comma negative I mean comma 24 so this is 20 and 21 2 3 24 is right here so now connect your points do not use a ruler Please connect your line with a free hand and do not use a pen on the graph paper. Make sure you use a pencil. Even when solving, use a pencil there on the graph paper. Okay. The only time you're going to use a pen is when you're writing your exam number or maybe your name on the graph paper. So use a free hand and make sure you're drawing a curve, not straight lines. It should be a curve. Okay. Now, once you're done, like that so you are getting three marks for plotting just this then you also indicate your equation just like we have indicated here to say this is the equation you have plotted that in the original okay so now we go to the third question so up to that far now we have gotten three marks okay okay we have gotten three marks that is just for plotting and connecting those points plus the finding of R so it is giving us four marks just there okay now they're saying use your graph to calculate an estimate of the gradient of a curve at a point where X is equal to 2 okay that is a good one so X is equal to 2 this is the point here when you're finding gradient or when they ask you to find the gradient always remember to say that point to the curve okay that 
point will be one of the points you have already plotted. Always remember that. And remember to say it will be one of the points where in the curve. So sometimes they can give you in full coordinates. They can say where 2 comma at a point where it is 2 comma 5. So what we are interested in in this case, it is just a value for x. That's all. We are not going to start drawing the tangent like we have done here. Of course, it is also correct when you draw the tangent like this and pick a point on one of the, uh, on the tangent. But what we'll do, we are going to find the derivative or we are going to differentiate the original equation. So we can see what I've written here to say we find the derivative of what? This final equation. So we are going to differentiate this equation, that original. So you go back and get from the origin. That equation is the one that we differentiate. Then once we are done differentiating, okay, we are going to insert now the value for x that we are given for the tangent. So how do we differentiate? A quick recap on how to differentiate. So you can see this. Okay, so if you are differentiating a number or a term that does not have a, a variable, if you are differentiating a number that does not have a variable, meaning which does not have a letter, the answer will be equal to zero. If you are differentiating a term which has a letter, this is how you are going to be differentiating it. Okay, you concentrate on your letter. So the power on the letter will become, will come on the coefficient. You can see the power for x is n. So that n is coming on the coefficient or in front of your letter. Then the same power is going to reduce by 1. It means you have differentiated there. Okay, so let us dive in into this. Let us differentiate this function. So differentiation of 3 is good, 0. Why? Because this is a constant. It is a term which does not have a letter. Good. Okay. Then differentiating negative 5x. So the negative will keep it outside. Then what power does this x have? This x here has got a power of 1. So if I'm differentiating there, I'll keep my negative 5 like this. Then since this power has to come in front of my letter, now we already have a number there. So as I'm writing, I'll multiply that power with the, the coefficient which is already there. So there's already a negative 5. I'm multiplying with the power which is the 1. Then this x, we say 1 minus 1. Okay, so negative 5 times 1, we're still having negative 5. Then x, so x, 1 minus 1 is what? Good, 0. And using indices, we say any number to the power 0, apart from 0 itself. So any number e to the power 0, the answer is equal to 1. So if I multiply 1 times negative 5, I'm going to still have a negative 5. So that will be the differentiation here. Then here, okay, we have something like that. Then here, we are having the 2 coming in front of my letter and there's no number there. So this is the 2, which was the power. Then the same power reducing by, by 1. Same applies on the last term there. The 3 is coming in front of my letter here. And the same 3 is also reducing by 1. Good. Okay. Then we proceed. So as you can see, here we are going to have x to the power 0. Here. We are going to have x to the power 0. 
and we have said any number to the power 0 apart from 0 itself it is equal to 1 so 1 times 1 times negative 5 we still have the negative 5 like that okay then here 2 to the I mean 2 minus 1 that is 1 but we don't show the power of 1 okay so that is why we have just written 2x here then the 3 minus 1 that is a 2 so we have 3x to the power 2 we have differentiated there so after we are done differentiating now we are going to put the value for x remember we are finding the gradient at a point where x is equal to 2 so when you are done differentiating you now get your value for x and insert it into the equation you are just from finding after differentiating so i'll put the two on these slots for x here and here okay so when i put the two there and the two there so i'll have two times two that is a four okay and two to the power two i also have a four okay so we have three multiplied by four what is the answer so we are having 12 there so we have negative 5 plus 4 plus 12 and my final answer is 11 so this is the value for the gradient okay so the most important thing is first of all to differentiate your original equation you are given after differentiating it now you are going to put the value for x on that given point where you are finding the gradient from so don't worry about drawing the line like we did there's no need for the line if you are differentiating okay then we proceed the other question was asking us to find the area okay we are asked to find the area now the area we've been given boundaries fence I, to say we need to end somewhere so i've been given x is equal to negative 3 and where x is equal to negative 2 and it's a three mark question okay so area in this case where x is equal to negative 3 that is here we drag a line and where x is equal to negative 2 that is here and remember we are finding the area which is bounded by the curve so the boundary should be the curve this side here i cannot find the area for this side why because i don't have a curve this side but we have a curve where on top here now the most i mean what you're supposed to do from here since you have your boundaries here and here so we are going to be calculating area using shapes we break it down just like you do it under um, uh, mechanics okay so we break it down we form a shape so the only shape we can form from here it's a right angle d triangle okay so we can only form a right angle d triangle here as you can see this is a triangle okay so from there we connect a point into there a right angle d triangle the area of a right angle d triangle is equal to what good half base into the height this is the area of a right angled triangle so all these questions remember you're writing them on the graph paper where there is space write these questions don't write them in the answer booklet you will lose marks there okay so let us proceed now for me to pick this is my base and this is my height okay so my base is starting from here up to here now when i'm moving from this point to this point i'm using the values in the x so i'll make sure that i use the scale for x and remember the scale for x we are using two centimeter to represent one so you can see this is a two centimeter box so it means my base will be equal to one unit good then this is y axis if i'm moving from this point to this point here i'm using the values for y so i'll use the scale for y 
Now remember in the 2 cm we are representing 10. So if I divide 10 by the 10 lines in the box there, I'm going to get 1. So each line here is representing 1 and 2, 3, then I'm going up to, this is 9 here. So the value for height is equal to 9. Then I'll just substitute on that formula. Okay. So we're going to have this format here. So where there's B, we are putting a 1. That is the one we found. Then where there's the H here, we are putting a 9. So if we multiply 1 times 1 times the 9, we're going to have 9 divided by 2. And my final answer here will be a 4.5. Okay. Now, we don't know uh, if we're in what units. Okay. We don't know if we're in kilometers. So you don't put centimeters. You don't put kilometers. Just remember that your area should be squared when you find. So what do you write? Because these are in units. Okay. We are representing units there. So you are going to write after the final answer, you write the square units. That's all. So it means this up to here, it will score you another three marks. Okay. So when you are given a portion to calculate the area, remember you have to draw the lines on the boundary. Then follow where there is a curve because it is the area which is bounded by the curve, meaning the boundary should be the curve. Okay. So that is all guys that we had. And I hope you benefited from this video. Practice a lot of questions. Of course, this is just part one. And then we're going to have a part two on how to solve equations under cubic functions also. All right.